Good afternoon, I'm Charlotte Britton from Autumn Exposure and here today I'm at the Leeds Club talking to Jennifer Holloway from Spark Personal Branding, so welcome. Hiya. So uh, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Um, so do you want to kick off and just tell us a little bit about Spark Personal Branding? Yes, uh, Spark Personal Branding is based on my ethos that you need to be yourself. That's the best way to get ahead in business, in your career. If you are yourself, people buy people and they can trust what they're buying. So that's the ethos of personal brand. Sometimes though being yourself needs a bit of help to, well, who am I and what am I bringing to the table? And uh, as we're getting more into an online community, having a brand that when I meet you, I get you, needs to continue into the online. So things where people can buy you even if you're not in the room. So I set up Spark because personal branding is something that us Brits aren't necessarily good at because we're all light under a bushel, mustn't say what I'm good at, but you know what, we're competing on a worldwide stage now, so it's about time you need to go out and blow your own trumpet, and there's so much other noise out there anyway, if you don't, you're just going to get left behind. So, so tell me a little bit more about, just touched on that one there, about your online branding, sort of online credibility. Yeah. It's weird, when I talk to people, say I do a, a workshop and I say to people, how many of you have Googled someone before you've gone to met them? And everyone puts their hand up. I go, oh great, okay. So how many think that you've been Googled before someone's come to meet you? And it seems such a simple question, but it's like the light's gone on. And I say, okay, so what do people find when they Google you? How many of you have Googled yourself? And not everyone puts their hands up. There's a lot of people go, oh, well, I sort of did my LinkedIn profile five years ago. I haven't really looked at it. You know, this is important stuff. Seven seconds is all it takes for a first impression to be formed. And people have it in their heads that that's when you meet someone. It's not. It's the very first touch that you have with that person. It could be the email you receive from them, the voicemail that you hear of them, but more and more, it's going to be you found them on LinkedIn, or maybe you spotted them on Twitter, or you read their profile on a company website. And if that isn't saying what it needs to say, if it's not representing you in the best light, you're missing a huge opportunity. And do you think that goes across everything from your website, your LinkedIn profile, your Twitter account, YouTube, everything. everything? Absolutely everything. Which isn't to say you need to be doing everything. I've had plenty of people say to me over the years, oh, I need to start tweeting. Why? Because everyone's doing it. Well, what do you want to say? Oh, I don't know. Um, if you're going to do it, do it well. Uh, for me, for instance, I know where my clients are. I spend more time on LinkedIn. I don't bother with Facebook. Um, partly because I'm a private, more of a private person anyway, but it's just not my thing. Um, other people I know run their businesses very much through Facebook. So I think know where your audience is, typical marketing, know where your audience is, use the channel that suits, um, but do it very well. So uh, LinkedIn um, and Twitter and blogging are where I very much spend my time. That's what I enjoy. Um, but it's about getting a bit of personality across. So, for instance, Twitter, I've been doing that for, I don't know, a couple of years now. And at first I was really lost because I had to keep my eye on, I have a brand that I want people to get a sense of through my tweets. And I was not quite sure, but um, I saw a, a quick video clip of a guy known as Mr. Lip, Mr. Twitter. And he basically said, the three things you want to be doing. You want to be sharing other people's information, sharing your own, showing you're an expert, and you want to be doing a little bit of social. Don't just do one. And once I got my head around there's a mix and what I want people to know about me, it became a lot easier. So tell me a bit more about taking Spark personal branding online. You know, obviously taking your own advice. Is it something that you walk the talk or do you find it quite challenging? Uh, luckily for me, I really enjoy writing as I speak. Uh, is the number one thing that people have fed back to me. Uh, particularly my blog. They say, oh, when I read your blog, it's like you're talking includes the old swear word sometimes, you know, it includes colloquialisms, but I feel that that's the biggest compliment, that when someone, someone else said to me, before I knew I was coming to see you, I googled you, I read your website, and I knew just from the tone of voice what you'd be like, and now I've met you, you're absolutely that person. So it's about getting that buy-in before people meet you, but if you're not consistent, they won't carry on the buy-in. I think the big breakthrough for me was when I finally took my own advice and I put a video on, on the homepage of my website. People buy people and to have me in person talking for a one minute 46, um, that has won me business internationally. 
Yeah, I had a woman from Switzerland who phoned me who uh, she happens to work for a large tech corporation and she said to me the reason I'm coming for it to you is because I can tell you are the most untech corporation person I've ever seen and that's what I want. But if you're not giving the clues about what people get with your brand, how can they make the decision? It's a really interesting point about people buy from people. Actually, yeah. so this whole online credibility and personal branding, online and offline, needs to be consistent, needs to be authentic, needs to be genuine. Yeah, yeah. Don't try and be someone you're not. You can be variations of yourself. So um, if you if you take on on a spectrum, I always think you've got LinkedIn is very business to business, Facebook's business uh, social, and Twitter for me sits somewhere in the middle. So I will say things on Twitter about my chickens and my bees and things like that that I wouldn't necessarily put on LinkedIn. But before I even think about communicating online, I have decided, and this is a big part of personal branding, which parts of my personal brand are for sharing and which parts are not. And of the bits that are for sharing, what clues do I want people to take away from that about my brand? So for instance, if you read my profile on LinkedIn, uh, it finishes with a note about how I live my version of the good life and I've got chickens and bees and we've got vegetable patch and I will occasionally sip a glass of Rioja while listening to the archers. Now, some people said to me, oh, you shouldn't mention that you listen to the archers, you know, and, and I said, why not? Because I do listen to the archers. But why I put that in there is that when you look at the rest of my website, it's quite slick. I'm all bright red lipstick and painted nails and quite... Um, you know, full on. I want people to know that there's this much softer side, no makeup, wellies, chicken crap everywhere, you know, um, because then you're getting the real brand. So, but it's thinking consciously. If I say the archers, chickens, and bees, that's giving in three little things a lot about my brand. But yeah, there's things that, quite frankly, I'm not sharing with anybody, um, and you need to know before you go out there because I've seen so many faux pas. On, on Twitter and um, Twitter and LinkedIn, particularly people linking their Twitter to LinkedIn, automatically, bad, bad move, definitely. Mm, interesting. So, what have been the key challenges or even successes that you've had with sort of Twitter and LinkedIn blogging? Uh, key challenge is finding the time because uh, I am not someone who is keyed up to always being on my on Twitter anyway. Um, I think Twitter is fabulous for that. It's a very useful tool, but I haven't become this avid user that other people have. So I found when someone, uh, I think it was you actually recommended Hootsuite to me, yay, I can do a certain amount of tweets up front on a Sunday. I just set out what I'm doing. If I'm going to see people, I'll make sure that I put those tweets in because if I'm traveling there, I'm probably gonna forget to do it. And then I do um, ad hoc tweets you know, as I go through the week, plus Buffer has become a really great tool for me. So while I'm reading interesting blogs, just to be able to click the button and just add that as a tweet is really good. So I sort of do that as a mix. So, so the, the thing is time though. The real wins have been, um, I've got direct examples, particularly with LinkedIn and business that I've got. Uh, when I first started on LinkedIn, I was really uh, not really interested. Then I, that was when I was in corporate life, and then I started my own business, and I realised its potential. And I can give you, for instance, that I was um, on LinkedIn. I, every so often, I'll spend just a couple of hours browsing, looking at who I'm connected to. Found someone in an organisation who had, was already giving me work. Clicked the similar button for it to recommend people that were like that. Saw this person at Booper, and I thought, oh, I've not really considered approaching Booper to do work. Saw that I was connected to him by a client, and then phoned my client up. And this is a bit of personal branding where I actually take it offline. I know through LinkedIn you can ask someone to do an introduction, but it's about people. So I phoned up my client, how well do you know X at Booper? Oh, he's best friends with my wife. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, I could do with organising a coffee with him. Um, why don't you come along? And I ended up meeting this guy, and I got business from Booper. But if LinkedIn hadn't been there showing me the connections, I would have had absolutely no clue. And just as it another way to get your brand out there in a way that you control. So, you know, anything where when it comes up on Google, it's high on the rankings and it's what you want to say about yourself, you're managing your reputation. That's a really good point actually. So uh, on, on uh, LinkedIn then, is it more do you think about um, sort of pulling together some sort of different threads and actually 
being authentic, being genuine, but actually being quite involved on the platform. So do you leave comments on the people? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I see it very much as for LinkedIn and Twitter as well. For me, it's about staying on other people's radars and having them stay on mine. So it's a very time effective way of, so for instance, I write a blog every fortnight. Um, I send that out to people who specifically asked to have it sent to them. Um, but then I also then put it on LinkedIn. Someone comments on it. I comment on other people's blogs. I might start a poll every now and again. Um, and here's the case in point. I spoke to a guy uh, who I hadn't spoken to for three years. And I just happened to pick up the phone to him. And he said, Miss Holloway, blimey, you've been busy. And I thought, really? How do you know that? He says, every time I open my LinkedIn updates, there's your face. <laughs> That's what I want, you know. I haven't seen you for three years, but you still remember me. I'm front of mind that when you need me, I'm there. But if you just, if you only use LinkedIn for things like, you know, or the only update I get is Charlotte is now connected to, Charlotte is now connected to, it's, it becomes noise and I stop listening. But if Charlotte's got a new blog or Charlotte thinks this is really interesting, Charlotte wants to share this information, you know, that then puts you in my head as a brand, as someone who's generous, who wants to share stuff. Who you know? Who wants to interact? Who is also canny enough not to just use LinkedIn for oh, someone sent me an invitation? I'll say yes. So it, it it gives subtle clues as well. Even go to someone's LinkedIn profile. When I Google someone, as I'm sure you do, you go to Google before you go and see them, don't you? I am very judgmental. <laughs> People dread meeting me because they say, "Oh, I know you've looked at my profile." But things like if you can't even be bothered to upload a photograph which takes, what, 30 seconds Absolutely. if you're doing a decent crop, then how bothered are you going to be in a work environment? If you can't even be bothered to write a summary, if you can't even be bothered to do, uh, you know, capital letters at the beginning of sentences, it's all giving clues. And people do it very slapdash and think, well, it doesn't matter. But actually, the things that we judge people on can be the minutest detail. So why not spend the time um, you know, thinking about it, I, I, I've said before, someone said to me once, if I Google someone and I don't find them, I believe they do not exist. That's harsh words, but I think that that's where we're going. If you're, if you're considering two people to pitch for a job or to have for an interview, and you Google them and you find loads of really good positive stuff about one of them, and you find not very much or even something negative about the other, well, go figure, you know. So, so do you think that's where it's going? A lot more people, um, I suppose, this whole online credibility, online branding has become far, far more important, I suppose, as internet usage and smartphone penetration increases? Completely, completely. I think that it's people uh, sort of in the personal brand industry, um, a lot of people have always often said to me, oh, so you're an image consultant, because it's all about the image. Do you know what? In some ways, it's becoming a lot less about the image because when you're online, your body language and you know how you look isn't there. Other than unless you're using a photo, which is a very good way of doing it. But um, yeah, absolutely, it is becoming so important. And just being there, being on people's radars, because you know what? If you're not doing it, someone else is. And that's the bit that I think people haven't really twigged. When, when I talk to people, and I use that phrase, people by people, everyone, everyone to a T goes, oh, that's very true. And they can usually give me examples of people they've bought into, people that they've just met and instantly thought, no way. So they all get that bit. But I say to them, the, the bit of thinking that I, people aren't making is, it's your brand that says to people, when you buy me, this is what you'll get. So you need to send a very clear message. You need to decide what they get when they buy into you, and you need to decide how do I get that across, and online is part of getting that across. But if you're just sat there thinking, like a client I've got today, his LinkedIn profile is atrocious, so I'm sort of writing it for him, and he says, oh, you know, it's just one of those things that falls to the bottom of the list. And I said, how many people view your LinkedIn profile? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, quite a few people every week. Well, you are creating the wrong impression every time, but to him it's not important because he's still in that mindset that says it's when I meet people. Of course, it's not. It's not seven seconds. You know, I have to say, when I looked, I thought, oh, yeah, uninspiring. Um, and he's an amazing guy. He's really dynamic, really co-getting. You wouldn't have a clue. So do you think there's also this thing about being, so if you put the brand online and the brand offline needs to be hand in hand? Yeah. 
yeah. as well. So I can't be. Well, I always say to people, don't go a bit too gas on your photo on on yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. Because if you're completely, you know, dump and makeup and you've got your fake tan on, yeah. the actual real world, you're pasty white. Right? Yeah. You know, it's that whole authentic. It's absolutely. I say to people, I want to get the person in your picture that I will get when I meet you. So why are brides? Women putting their bridal pictures on there. Well, unless you're darling, you're turning up in a tiara and a strapless gown, not going to see it. I'm connected to a partner in a law firm, I will not say which one, and she's great. But when I was on her profile, it said, people you may also be interested in. And it was, when I looked, I saw this picture of this guy dressed as Elvis, who is also a partner in her law firm, hence why his picture came up thinking really now there's a part of me that likes it from a brand point of view because he's saying something like I love Elvis and so it is a bit of well, yeah. bit maverick obviously got a sense of humor so I think that's great Twitter or Facebook please not LinkedIn because this is business and you know really I want to so many times I think people just on LinkedIn want to see what you look like because I'm going to meet you I need to be able to pick you out in the crowd so things like putting your picture as you from here to here or um, I'm connected to an HR director who has put up um, a group shot of, I'm assuming, uh, her daughter's wedding, where I'm assuming she's the mother of the bride, but there's a group, it could be any of them. Um, and also she's teeny tiny in it. So, you know, th this isn't rocket science. What I talk about is not rocket science, but so many people are making glaringly bad mistakes. But the thing that, it's not just about making sure you have a decent picture. So that's sort of taking you from negative to neutral. Things like, and it's, it, we'll use a picture as an example, this is an opportunity to get across positive clues about your brand. Of course. So for instance, my photo, um, when I was having my picture taken, I thought, what do I want people to know about my brand? Um, cheekiness, a little bit of sassiness is quite a big part of my brand. So I, what I did is, I actually, great tip this, I went on iStock.com, you know the stock, I stock photos, you know it very well. And I just did a search for um, female business head and shoulders. And it came up with every which way that you can take a photograph of a businesswoman. And I let my eyes scan through it, and the ones that jumped out at me, that appealed to me, were ones that appealed to my brand. And there was one of a, a woman looking sort of cheeky and up to the side, and I thought, bingo. So I went to my photographer and said, I want my picture like that. And so many people said to me, oh, I love your picture, it's cheeky. Um, great. One person said, I think you look shifty because you're not looking at the camera. But here's the interesting thing about brand. Not everyone will buy your brand, you know? And the people who see that and think cheeky, buy into it and we get on like a house on fire. The people who see that picture and think shifty, do you know what? We're not on the same wavelength anyway. Let's, you know it now. We're not going to waste time with each other. So it's almost self-selecting as well. Self-selecting, oh, interesting. Really. Yeah, it's, it's got so much power, but people just go, oh, that'll do. It's, you've got one chance to make a first impression. Why is that all do mm -hmm. suitable? It's not. Um, you know, but because we think we're almost not worthy enough of blowing our own trumpets. Well, I'm sorry if you can't tell me what's great about you. Why should I spend the time finding out? Make it easy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I suppose, you know, a hand site's a great thing. What top three tips would you give somebody starting out on their sort of personal branding, social media journey? Uh, definitely that thing that says work out who you are and what you're selling before you go online. Don't go out there and sort of feel your way and make it up as you go along. Uh, as part of that, work out what's the positive stuff and how can you give the clues to that. And then I think the third thing is very much around that, keep on people's radars. And online is very much about a two-way community. Don't just go out and go, look at me, I'm great, look at me, I'm great. You know, give something back. Um, interact with people um, and I mean that's one of the reasons I'm not on Facebook is that I know that that is an incredibly interactive community and unless you've got the time to interact then and there you're not being fair on people so choose your channel to suit where your audience is and what you can do well and just go out and get a couple of really great bits of personal brand out there rather than doing a half arse across everything. Sound advice. Sound advice. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. Some real gems in there. Cool. Thanks very much. So that's Charlotte Griffin signing out for Optimum Exposure. And if you're a business based in Yorkshire and have a great story about how you're using social media, please get in touch with us. Our telephone number and email address are on the next slide, or they are on the top right of the screen on YouTube. So uh, tune in next time for our next interview. Thank you very much. <laughs>